Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Today, I want to do a behind the scene post workflow tutorial to teach you how I remove the drone, the DJI M600, entirely from a stereoscopic 6K video shot by Obsidian's art. So, if you see my recent video, I post a recent drone video of me, uh, my friend Devin, and uh, my friend from Radiant Image, Allison, and Jordan flying an M600 with the Kenda Obsidian R, uh, which is shot 6K, 60 frame per second, stereoscopic 360 footage. And we fly that big boy up the sky in Cascade Lake, California. And you, you can see the video in here, if you check this link. And we really want to make this live footage as a showcase piece of our work. Uh, the one big issue for any drone footage is, is actually the drone itself. Uh, because if you see the drone, it should take you out from that reality that, uh, oh wow, I'm not flying anymore. But if you take the drone out, and you put the goggle on the viewer's head, you make them feel that you are, they are actually flying the sky and see this epic sunset and all the nice view. Uh, it just look amazing. Combined with a really smooth footage, calibrated with the Gimbal Guru, uh, because the Gimbal Guru is uh, sit between the M600 and the uh, Obsidian R, so the footage is super smooth, so people would not have a, a, a head sick uh, when watching the video. So uh, that would be really, really immersive, without a drone and super stabilized. But that is usually the two most difficult things to achieve in any drone footage. Well, you can achieve stabilization with a Gimbal, like the Gimbal Guru Air, which is uh, fine, but again, you still have to remove the drone and the gimbal in post-production uh, to really take out that thing is on top of people's head so people can really feel the immersive. But it's actually very, well, I wouldn't say really hard to take out the drone, but most people don't know how to do it because first, stereoscopic 360 is still pretty new for most of the people, even in the 360 world. Uh, so. The traditional uh, remove object, the way you, you try to cut them out uh, in a monoscopic footage, uh, it's not going to work in stereo because stereo is up and down, top and bottom. So uh, you really need to like cut both out so when they combine together, they actually will be disappeared. There's many ways to remove object in stereoscopic footage and I actually already made a beginner simple tutorial to teach you how to remove a tripod in a stereo footage uh, which is Premiere and Photoshop. But in this scenario, it's more difficult because the lighting is changing, meaning that because it's sunset, the sky is changing color, the crowd is moving uh, on top of the drone. So uh, if you just simply cut them out in Photoshop as a, as a clean play, uh, you can obviously see the sky is fake because it, it, it's not changing color and it's no crowd there or crowds not moving uh, compared around it. And also another really challenging problem here is even the gimbal separate the camera from the drone, but still uh, the distance is not hard enough. M600 is a really big drone. So uh, there's a lot of space you know, cut out in this entire 360 footage. So uh, that's also presented challenging problem for, for us. So we want to tackle that because I think that this is a very common issue if you are a drone operator, you're feeling stereoscopic PC footage. For commercial gear, you have to remove the drone anyway. So here I'll just share my experience, how I remove the drone in this footage so you can maybe learn from it, take some tips and tricks from it so it can help you in your next drone 60 project. So in here, I'm using the Mocha VR brand new beta. Uh, with this plugin, it's make everything so much easier. Let's look at the footage right here. Uh, this is actually already finished footage. Right here is the uh, metal mantra view. So you, if you look up, you see there is no drone there. You see the crowd. So if you double click inside, just pan around, you see the sunset. So you wouldn't see the drone anywhere. So it's really immersive. You look like you're flying like a Superman, which is pretty cool. And that is the footage. But if you see, I hide the remove drone, you see the drone is actually take up like, like one third of the entire frame. There's a lot of things to remove. Before you even go into the post-production to remove it, some suggestion I would tell you like, if you fly an M600, we actually put a single GoPro, can be any GoPro camera, on top of your drone to capture the sky. Why we want to do that? Because we want to use this footage from the GoPro, just one single GoPro as a clean plate to cut out the drone as 
much drone as possible. You don't actually need to put a music camera on top of it. Again, if you have the budget, you can actually put a GoPro Fusion on it. That's something that I will test next time. But just one simple GoPro will be good enough to make sure it's pointing it to the sky, like what we do in here. And then sync it with audio. So you already capture the sky the top of the drone. So you can use this and cover uh, the drone. So enough talking, let's figure out, let's go into the post in Premiere and After Effects and figure out how to do this. So first thing is bring in all your footage into your premium timeline, you know, GoPro and Obsidian. Uh, so the first thing is to actually need to sync the GoPro footage with the Obsidian art. That's actually a pretty important step. So when here, uh, when Jordan flying the drone, they always clap, three clap to do audio sync. And that's really important uh, because before the propeller turn on, you actually can hear clearly the, cl the clap. And using that, you can just use Premiere right here, synchronization with audio can easily sync the footage right here. So it's always sync. So now the GoPro footage and Obsidian footage is sync. So just be careful because the GoPro, again, don't have a fish eye lens on it. There's not enough overlap to actually overlap with the Obsidian footage. Uh, so it's actually pretty hard to do a visual sync. So you always want to do audio sync in this scenario. After that, because I already do the edit right here, I will just simply right click and just replace with After Effect composition so I get everything ported into After Effect. And then I'm gonna simply do undo here because I, I'm not gonna like do a round do a round chip because that's gonna be crazy. Machine's not gonna hold. Uh, but as you see, if I do that, we create we bring all the footage in After Effect, one is After Effect, and the GoPro footage is right here see, in the middle of the stereoscopic footage. Well, the first thing is you want to group all your obsidian footage into and pre-com, so we're gonna pre-com this, and I will go ahead and name it the Obsidian S2 because I already done the first one. So go ahead and move everything in the composition. Hit OK. So now we have the Obsidian S2, and with the GoPro footage right here, see on top of each other. Okay, the second step is the first frame is not much to go on, so we we just scrub through and find a pretty good frame. On the sky, so okay, you can really see what's going on with the skies. I think this is a pretty good frame right here. And then the second step is we're gonna use Mocha VR to transform this into a view that we can use. So go ahead and here type in Mocha VR. Mocha VR is a frame right here. Type in Mocha VR and then drop the Mocha VR onto the obsidian layer right here and tell Mocha VR that there's a top and bottom stereoscopic footage and go ahead and open the module render. Go ahead and render. After you do the undistort, so go ahead and view. I want a top view, which is right here, the center view. So now you see the drone, the top view right here, which is great. And again, if you don't have enough space, see the drone is actually really, really big in here. Uh, so you want more space, you can adjust the, the VR lens FOV right here. So just pull it back out, maybe around here. Let's do 150. So now we have enough skies to compare what's going on with the GoPro footage. So now the GoPro, we, we try to match the GoPro footage as much as possible with the sky so we can cover it. So what I'm doing first is just look at a good frame that I can really see some like Similarity of the sky and the footage. And I see some right here. If you pay attention right here. So if you go ahead and hit R, just rotate this. You see that that's actually match up with right here. See this stripe is this stripe and this big giant crowd and this big giant crowd. So again, the gold footage is way too big, so it's, it's, it's actually in 4K. So I'll just scale it down a little bit. Again, you don't need to be exact. You just need to scale it down a little bit. Kind of match it. See, now it's kind of matching everything. It looks good. So uh, now we actually rotate the footage and scale the footage and make it match. Kind of match the obsidian footage. You don't need to be exact match. It's kind of match. It's good. And the second step is color correction to make this uh, match with the obsidian footage. 
So this is not a color correction course. So uh, I would just like run through it. So I just copy and paste the preset I, I use in here. Uh, again, uh, you don't need to use color register. This is by Red Giant. Uh, you can use like the loop, uh, whatever come with the uh, Luma Matrix. Oh, I think that's how to pronounce it. Uh, come with the Premiere and do the color correction. It's just pretty easy. Um, as you see right here, uh, I just basically make the mid-tone to more blue-ish to match the sky um, and just increase the contract. So it's like pretty close to the obsidian footage. So yeah, just do some basic correction, uh, color correction. Uh, it doesn't need to be exact, but try to just match the color as much as possible uh, between the GoPro and the Obsidian. Okay, so that's step two, color correction. For the next step, we have gotta get rid of the sharp edges of the of the GoPro footage. So go ahead and make sure you select the layer, use your pen tool, and just draw around it in the center. to try to cover the drone. So it's okay, you can draw inside of it because we're gonna add a feather. So you don't wanna draw like right against the edges. So the edges will show up. So now to go ahead and in the mask, right here is a feather. You're gonna have a pretty dramatic feather right here. And we wanna try to cover the drone as much as possible. So in here at this point, you don't need to really worry about matching it. So what I would do is just hit on scale to make this as large as possible and then back to the mask. And even make the feather more dramatic. So now as you see the sky is kind of fully covered. If you move it right here, uh, the sky is kind of fully covered. Uh, the drone right now. But uh, if you pay attention, you still see the edges right here. Your feather is really large, but the thing, the mass you draw is pretty close to the edges. So if this is the scenario, you want to pull this back. It's okay you see the drone, but let's pull this back. So you have more the center part, so you will not see the edges. And if you see the drone, just go ahead and back to scale and just enlarge it until you really cover the drone again. Okay, so here is the final result I have uh, with the GoPro footage cover the drone. But even that, if you really play the video, you can still see the drone right here. See, the full propeller. Uh, but again, the footage is matching the the obsidian really well and you can not really see the GoPro anymore. It's really blend in. So we just need to cover this full part. So there's two ways. If you don't want to do any roto, you can just maybe enlarge the GoPro footage to cover that entirely. But I want to use this opportunity to show you a different way to actually like polish your cover to try to just get rid of the extended part of the jump, if the jump is really big on the M600s, and also like matching the footage around it so you look like realistic. So that's actually the correct way to use the lens module with Mocha VR. Uh, is they usually assume you don't have the on top patch part of the GoPro footage. Uh, you have to just roll to the entire jump out. And that's how you do it. I will show you exactly how. So we can just use the bottom part as an example. So go ahead and pick the cone stem too double click in the layer, and then you will open it in the layer panel. So in here, you can simply just hit all, using content aware, again, pick a larger brush. So, okay, right here. And just go ahead and like that. You can print on the entire drone. So that's easy. But as you see, using this method, it doesn't create this really realistic result. So my preference is actually, go ahead and remove everything you just did. To not paint out the entire drone, instead only paint out the extended part, but still using the GoPro to cover that, the middle frame. So as you see right here, so if you go back in here, so all we need to, cover is this part, this part, this part, this part, and the landing platform right here. 
So this actually not many points to paint out. So again, go ahead and put a cone stamp to double click inside. And all we need to do is go ahead and paint out this part. So now if you go back, so now see all this part is gone, but also with the GoPro blend in, this is look really smooth and look like really realistic. So we could just gotta do, a, do the same thing for the bottom part. So go ahead and just duplicate the top GoPro and just drag it down here, just cover this part and go ahead and paint out the, paint out the part that is sticking out from the, uh, from the GoPro. So I'll go ahead and already do that for you. So now, See, I paint out all the propeller and the landing platform right here. And just if I turn on the GoPro overlay with the chrome stamp, now it's look really, really smooth. So now we just need to go revert this whole process back to the project. So now go ahead and pick this, go back to the effect and make sure you copy this Mocha VR effect. Just so control and C and go copy this effect. And then go ahead and select everything and go ahead and hit pre-com and pre-com this and then go ahead and paste that mocha via effect back onto this layer and then we go back to this layer and go ahead and copy the same effect and don't worry, look kind of weird but we basically gotta do the reverse from lens undistort we go ahead and hit lens distort and now you get the sky part the cover part of the sky that's exactly what we need and then go back again and drag the obsidian footage, which is the obsidian S2 right here, drag it back and drop it in the obsidian footage right here. See, now the drone is gone. So now with this new footage, I want to show you again. See, with the drone, patch out the drone and everything blend beautifully. And now you just need to go ahead and output the session you need. So I pick a session right here. I just go ahead and composition, add to render queue, and here, just pick the output setting you need. I work in PC, so I usually click quick time. Just RGB is enough, and I will usually use right here uh, the DNX HR and this format, the HQ, and set. Go ahead and render. Or if I do Mac, I have this thing called After Coast. It's actually a plugin that allows you to output uh, ProRes in a PC. So I also can output ProRes 422 to normal or HQ if I want to. Uh, get a ProRes version and bring it back to Mac and do further editing. Uh, but that's it. That's how you can remove a drone easily with the brand new Mocha VR Beta, the Lens Distort and Lens Module to get rid of it. Again, if you found this tutorial useful and you want to see more pole production with Mocha VR after event and premiere, then don't forget to comment below, give me a thumb up, and let me know what you want to learn less in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.